Hi, Sequels friends. So you guys know I don't really keep a death pile, but I gotta come clean with you guys. I have this pile of jewelry, which is technically a death pile, and I've been adding to it for over a year. All these things were thrifted, gifted, or came in Goodwill Blue Box, and they look like fine jewelry. I can't tell, there's no markings. I don't know if it's 10 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat. I don't know if it's sterling silver. I don't know if it's CZ, crystal, or diamonds. I have no clue. I've just been putting it all in this bag going, I need to figure that out later. Well, I've procrastinated on this long enough. We're figuring it out today. I have a diamond tester that I purchased on Amazon as well as a testing solution kit. I've never used these before, but we're gonna figure it out and I'm gonna bring you along with me. So let's see what I got. Hopefully there's some good stuff in here. Let's see. Hi Sequels friends, welcome back to my channel. It is so wonderful to have you here today. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you're new, my name's Heather. I am a part-time reseller across various platforms and I use this YouTube channel to document my journey. I love to tell you guys, if you wanna see more content like this, me stepping outside of my comfort zone and trying new things, then make sure you hit that thumbs up button and you might as well go ahead, hit that subscribe button, become part of the Sequels Friendship. We would love, love to have you here. All right, so honestly, I've been hoarding that stuff for way too long. I keep putting in my notes every month, test that jewelry, test that jewelry, and I postpone it, postpone it, postpone it. So finally, I bit the bullet. I went on Amazon. I bought a diamond tester kit. I don't know. It had good reviews. I have no idea whether it's good. I have no idea how to use it. There's some instructions in here. I'm probably going to read the instructions and then look at some YouTube videos and see if I can figure this out. And then I also bought this metal testing kit. Um, it's supposed to be able to identify 10, 14, 18, 22 carat, as well as sterling and platinum. There's all sorts of solutions. There's this little test stone. I mean, this is like a science experiment. And again, no idea how to use this. Yes, there are some instructions in there, but I figured what I'll do is start by looking at some YouTube videos, make sure I really feel comfortable with this, and then I'm going to turn the camera and we're actually going to test some things together. Are there gonna be some mistakes made? Most likely. <laughs> As I said, I know nothing about this, but I'm hoping that this video of me stepping outside my comfort zone helps motivate you to step outside of yours, to motivate you to do something that you've been procrastinating doing for your reselling business. If you're like me and you need to test some jewelry, this video hopefully will help you be motivated to do that. But maybe there's something else you need to do in your reselling business that you've been procrastinating on. I hope this motivates you to stop procrastinating on it. Go ahead figure it out, and let's get some of these items listed. All right, Sequels friends, today is going to be part one of this jewelry testing videos. Um, today we are just going to focus on using this to diamond test all of these items. In part two, we'll metal test all of these items, as well as a few more goodies that are in this bag. So, Part one starts today. Let's get started. First of all, I have this um, little black pad down here just because it's a little bit easier to see the contrast of the diamonds. Um, and this is the diamond selector that I purchased. It is um, $16.99 on Amazon, and I will link that in the description below. Um, it comes in this little carrying case, and it does come with this little um, plate which you could put loose diamonds in but we don't have loose diamonds we have a lot of jewelry to test so here's what your diamond selector looks like it does have a 9 volt battery in there and the first thing you're going to want to do is turn it on you'll see right here it says lamp on battery okay and then lamp on ready okay when this light comes on and says it's ready okay then we can begin to use it um, there is a range here which we'll select based on our diamond size that can be selected using this volume that is the sound of it being a diamond and we'll get into more details on that shortly 
On the back of the diamond selector, it gives you a range as to how to put this setting before you test. So smaller diamonds, you set a little bit higher and larger diamonds you set a little bit lower. Now I am going with this kind of middle of the road right here. If it's really, really small, like a diamond accent piece where you can barely see the chips, we'll bump it up to six. Otherwise, we'll most likely keep it on four. I don't think I have anything that would be bigger than a quarter carat here. Um, maybe one ring, so we'll bump it down to two. Another thing to note on the back is that there is this silver plate. When you hold the diamond selector, you always wanna make sure to have some fingers on that plate. For me, this is a real comfortable way um, to hold it. Make sure you're holding that. Now you can see right here, our light is on, so we're good to go. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you is remove this tip because I have been practicing and I was doing it like this and I wasn't, it wasn't registering correctly because there's a cap on here. <laughs> Seems pretty obvious once you see it like this. It was not to me, so I'm here to warn others. <laughs> okay, I think a great pieces to test would be, let's start out with just this bracelet. Now I'm almost 95, almost 100% positive that this ring and bracelet um, are cubic zirconia. So I'm not expecting to see any results here. I believe these are all colored CZs and these are clear CZs and the same here, inside color CZ baguettes and outside clear. I'm going to set it on a four to start this testing based on the size. And when they set it on a four, it just means there's four little bars there. We're ready to go so we can start testing. The first thing I wanna let you know is if you hit metal, you'll hear this rapid fire sound. And you'll see those bars increase, but ignore the bars when you hear rapid fire. That just means you're hitting metal. That's not an accurate test. Again, don't forget, we always wanna have our fingers on the back and then just try to get in there and see if you can hit a stone. <laughs> That's hard enough in itself, especially if you're in the over 40 crowd. So right now I'm hitting on that green stone and you can see the bar went up one. Oh, you heard a little bit of metal hitting. The bar went up one, but we're not going all the way up. Definitely not a diamond. We're not expecting any of these to be diamonds. So we'll just run through that. Now let's check these small stones in the middle, which again are gonna be harder to hit because they are prong set with metal all around them. So let's see if we can hit any of them. There we are on one, and again, you can see, whoops, there you go, and you can see that it's not changing. So as I suspected, this is most likely CZ. This is the matching bracelet to the set. Let's just run over a couple of them. You can see it just goes up one. We're not looking at diamonds, and then let's see if we can hit a few of these without hitting the metal prong. And again, not going all the way up to diamond. So as I suspected, this is CZ. Keeping along that same vein is this. It looks like a wedding set, an engagement ring, uh, three, three band set, I think that's what you would call it. Now this has a little marking on it that says NV, which I believe is Nevada um, Sterling Mill. So because this is sterling silver, which again, we're suspecting based on markings, we'll figure out in the next video if it really is. But because this is sterling, I'm gonna suspect that this is CZ as well. Now this stone in the middle is quite big, so let's turn down our selector to a two always touching the piece on the back. And let's see if we can hit this stone. Should be an easy one to hit since it's so big. And again, you see how that moves up? But it does not move up all the way. Let's see if we can hit a couple of these small stones around 
on the um, accompanying band. Same thing, goes up one, doesn't really go up much. Same thing, goes up one, doesn't really go up much. So everything about this is telling us that this as well is not diamond. Pretty band, not diamond. These earrings came in a set in the same box with these um, diamond stud earrings. Um, they look like a four millimeter, so maybe like a quarter carat. And I thought that they were interchangeable until I looked closely and these look like, let's see if you could see there, these look like they are in white gold or silver and these are in gold. So they definitely don't go together. So we're going to go ahead and test each of these. As you could see, this is pearl, but it does have, um, oh man, I forget what this is called, a halo, I think they call them, a halo around it that is does have diamonds on it. And these are just studs. Because these are gonna be easier to hit with our finder, let's start with the studs first. Really pretty, nice prong setting. Um, it's a little bit, it's a pretty decent sized stone. Let's start, well, let's just start at the two and see what happens. We can work our way up to the four. Well, it doesn't even look like we need to work our way up. We got diamonds, folks. We got diamonds. Really pretty fire in there. So I would say right here that these are definitely diamonds. I'd have to measure to see what a four millimeter equals in carat. But if my memory serves, I think they're a quarter carat. I think it's gonna be easier for me to set it down here to hit that stone. But these are tinier chips, so let's bump it up to a four. Remember, we're always touching on the back. We're probably gonna hit some metal here, but let's see. Look at that, folks. We have diamonds. Since we're on a roll finding some diamonds, let's pick this one because I suspect that this one is not diamonds. This is a, what I would call a shaky pearl necklace. I do believe I saw a marking in my jeweler's loop that says that this is likely 10 karat gold and these may be good pearls. I have so much trouble teeth testing them, but I do believe it passed the tooth test. So now the question is, are those big honking stones diamonds? Now, I don't think that they are because I think that they're too big to be diamonds without this being worth a freaking fortune. But we might as well test to see for sure. Um, let's keep it on four and see what's up. See how we're going up some, but we're not hitting that red diamond zone. So as I suspected, these are most likely CZ. Three more to test here. We have this lovely bracelet that was packaged with these pretty little hoop earrings. Now, let's start with the bracelet because you can actually see, you can actually see a stone on the bracelet. I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to pick up that on camera because the stone is pretty small, but there is a, I don't think I'll be able to zoom in for you. Let's just blow out the video and see if we can zoom in for you. Right in between here, there's a tight little prong setting and it does look like there is a stone in there. You could see just a little of the shimmer. So let's pop it down on here. These are teeny, teeny, tiny. So we probably wanna bump up to six for an accurate test. Um, and this is gonna hit some metal for sure because it's gonna be hard to see. I should probably just go ahead and take my glasses off now and give it a try. Um, and let's see what we can get. Look at that.
Oops. See how if you can just get in between that metal? We got some little chippy diamonds in here. It might be considered diamond accent. So this is gonna be interesting when we get to the metal testing um, to see if this is, oops. This is gonna be interesting when we get to the metal testing because it does look like there's diamonds in there. I wonder if it's diamond accent, which means that this is likely going to be vermeil, which is gold dipped over sterling. Um, if it's real gold, then I will be shocked. So stay tuned for that video. <laughs> now we're gonna blow up the screen again so that you can really take a look at these because I know that you're not gonna be able to see them really well from that far down. Let's see. I'm gonna get a little glare of the ring light in here. There we go. So these are interesting. <laughs> Again, um, some stamp in the inside led me to believe that these may be Vermeil. And because we think they match those that bracelet, which makes me think that may be Vermeil. But what's getting me about these is it almost looks like, I don't know if you could see it that well, but it almost looks like there might be some diamond chips. You know how they do with that diamond accent. They make this metal look like little diamond pave chips when really there's no diamonds in there, but maybe just one single one. So you could see a little bit of sparkle down here. See how there looks like there's a couple little divot holes right there? Makes me wonder if those holes are actually diamonds. So. Keep this baby cranked up to six, four, six. And see if we can hit any of these puppies. Every one of those little divots that I'm hitting, it's coming up metal. I mean, I know they're so small that you would probably still hit the, um, I'm just doing that to show you the difference, that you would still hit, but to me, they're all metal. What is that, what they call, sometimes, um, is it called, my jewelry days, if I have a memory from them, um, is it called like pave made out of rhodium or out of uh, silver plated where they just hit lots of dots of silver, kind of like soldering doop, 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 to make it look like diamonds from a distance? I don't know. Doesn't look like diamonds to me. And now we're down to the last one, folks, and it is this beautiful cross. Now, if I had to guess, you have a lot of baguettes all throughout here. You can see it, beautiful sparkle. And then if you look really, really close, you can see one little, little center stone. Um, always the pessimist. I am going to assume this is diamond and that all of these are CZ. I don't know a lot about diamonds or 
um, the baguette style. If the baguette style is an easy one to put chips in or lower quality diamonds, it just seems like a lot of diamonds. See, all the way across. I mean, they're not very thick. Because you see, they can't, they'd have to hide in there. So maybe, 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 maybe I shouldn't be such a pessimist. Maybe, maybe. Um, let's do four to start the test here. And we're going to try to hit that one in the center first because it's going to be the hardest to get. Now I say it's going to be the hardest and I hit that little sucker on the first try. We got diamond in the center. We suspected we'd have diamond in the center. So let's test some of these little baguettes on the side. Oh, mm, that confused me. Hold on. Okay. Well, look at you, little Miss Cross. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you're notified when the part two of this video drops in the upcoming week. I really hope that this video helps you step outside your comfort zone to do something that's going to help with your reselling business. Sometimes we just need a little extra motivation to learn a new skill that we know will help us move forward in our reselling business. And that's where I was with this. I kept saying, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, and procrastinated on it. And now I'm glad that it's done and I have all those new jewelry pieces to list. So I really hope this helps you get out of your comfort zone, learn something new that's going to help with your reselling business. Go ahead and comment below what thing you've been procrastinating on because you just know that it's going to be a whole learning curve to figure it out. And I just want to let you know, I'm going to give you some positive feedback to go ahead and get started on that. You can do it. And oh my gosh, the best thing is going to be when it's done, it's done and you have all that knowledge. So when this problem comes up again, it's easy to solve. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do so appreciate you. Um, have a fabulous rest of the weekend, and I'll see you on Friday with some more reselling content. Take care, everybody. Bye.